the director of the Center on African Philanthropy and Social Investment, Professor Begingosi Moyo, Kapsi and Kisi Matim, the trust fund uh, members that are with us on this call, the other patrons, Mrs. Grasa Michelle and John Kegasong, all the donors uh, that are here on the call and physically there. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, bonjo, habari, chana muema, sani bonani. It's a true honor to be part of the inaugural uh, Kisima quarterly dialogue. It's a true honor to be part of Kisima. Uh, congratulations on this very important initiative and the launch of the mobile app. We thank uh, Prof Moyo for his leadership and all the donors that have made it possible for us to be here. Thanks for bringing back storytelling, which is captured for generations. Our offspring will enjoy what we missed, which is stories told by our forebears in their voices with their faces captured. The beauty of technology used to revive a culture that we are so proud of. We'll never know what they said because it wasn't written, but with this, we'll be able to know people that lived well before our time, at least our grandkids will. Thanks for highlighting our history of giving. Giving because it's the right thing to do. Giving without expecting anything in return. Giving privately to respect the dignity of those that receive the help. Giving not only what we have, but what we know and who we know through networking. When I listened to the videos on the website, I liked Nelson Magamo's uh, definition of success. Namely, that success is the ability to contribute to your community. He continues and says, giving is for making a difference and passing it forward, not giving for a show on social media. I thought instead of talking about the different documented studies on giving as we celebrate our inaugural dialogue, the do's and don'ts that you will find when you search in the web, I'll share my own lessons on giving. Storytelling is about telling our stories and I want to remain true to what Kisima is trying to achieve by doing just that. I'll share the things I've learned over time. The word philanthropy is foreign to your typical African because giving to us has always been part of being. It didn't have a name. It wasn't a standalone concept. It was part of our DNA. I remember as a child, my mother used to give to her, of her time and expertise. She was a primary school teacher. And at night she would teach domestic workers how to read and write and basic arithmetic. On some days she would ask me to come with her and teach. I would have been around eight or nine. The impact was real. You would hear someone say, I couldn't read. Now I can read my own letters and write my own letters. No one can cheat me anymore because I can now count my change. There is no better return than that, positive change on people's lives. As I grew up and I was now at medical school, I remember a friend of ours who had discovered a school in town where township kids who had failed metric exam were working on improving their subjects before they do the rewrite. We were all good at maths as medical students. So he would take us with him in a bus to go and teach uh, the kids maths. These kids were obviously of similar age as us because we're in first or second year and they just failed matric. No one sponsored our bus fare. We just took from the little pocket money that we had and went to try and make a positive difference and didn't think much of it. It was a way of being. That was Dr. Norman Sibula, who contracted COVID at the end of last year because he chose to go and help out in hospitals at the peak of COVID. Sadly, he succumbed to it. May his soul rest in peace. Giving was his way of being. 
Giving for me and my family has been part of our DNA too. Our focus has been on education and rural development. In the process of giving, we've learned valuable lessons, starting with the bursaries that we offer. Our take has been influenced by our own journeys as students. When I was at medical school again, I failed second year and lost my bursary, which made it very difficult for my mother who was the only remaining parent by the time I went to medical school. Though it was tough, I did become a doctor eventually. This personal journey made me not to withdraw funding when a student fails one or two causes. That, and, and that has paid dividends, just giving people that extra time and that extra funding. When I now look at the students that you've supported over time, who are now responsible and productive citizens of the country, it makes it all worth it. There is no better return than that. Education has a multiplier effect. If I had to choose just one thing to give towards, it would be education. Lesson learned from this experience, don't give up too soon on people. Always consider their background and the psychosocial support that they may require over and above money. Staying with education with a rural focus because of the higher need in those areas. We adopted a primary school in our ancestral farm, which is very rural and impoverished in KZN. My husband's grandfather donated land and also assisted with building of the school back in the 50s. When we got involved in the 90s, we assisted in the building of the computer lab and kitting it out. We felt really good about ourselves. We're doing something. Soon enough, we discovered that not much was happening in this lab. To cut a long story short, we decided to hire a computer instructor who runs computer lessons every day for different grades. So now they're scheduling for each grade to have their turn to go and learn and work on the computers rather than just computers being covered uh, for no use by anyone. We got maths and English programs that the learners use where their progress can be measured and they can be ranked against other schools who use the same program. What we learned is that to have an impact, you have to stay close to the projects that you support fully understand and support their needs and be able to measure impact. While we wanted to replicate this initiative in the neighboring high school to ensure that there's continued success of the students that are produced by the primary school, we failed. The leader of the school was not interested. We learned the importance of leadership as everyone in this room will know. It is a make or break in any setting, leadership that is. Leaders that are there to serve, leaders that care for their people and the people that they need and take pride in the success of their organizations is what makes a difference between successful organizations and those that don't grow and eventually fade. In schools, it is said that leaders like that continue without recourse accept the destruction of our children, their future and their communities. Investing in the leaders in education at all levels is critical for the successful quality education and the prosperity of communities. Another lesson learned was that you can't impose your help. Never throw good money after bed. When you realize that there isn't good leadership to take the cause forward, then just remove your resources because they can be better served elsewhere. In the same rural community, we engage with the community to understand their needs. People from cities who happen to be us are notorious for imposing their wishes on rural communities without taking the time to understand what these communities actually need. Understanding this, we took a year consulting with the community and we were clear that we are all aligned. After building a hall for community skills training, for hosting monthly mobile clinic and local events, we were further, we went further pay agreement. We brought in, we brought in a reputable company that gave the community practical training on arts and crafts, budgeting and pricing of products made. 
the, the objective was to create small entrepreneurs who were trained to, pro to produce a product, price it and sell it with help. This was very exciting. The community produced this beautiful arts and crafts and we got young entrepreneurs who bought the products, added a markup and sold to retail stores. The team shared the money that was made, but it only worked for a year. Then the committee was not happy. They wanted to be paid for coming to work, whether they produced anything or not, whether the products were sold or not. Lesson learned, as a country, we've created a culture of takers who think the government and any philanthropist owe them a living. Social grants, while they help, they also create a culture of entitlement. We need to build back that human dignity and pride, the culture of people understanding that they are the masters of their own destiny. I truly believe that this issue is very important and requires a national drive to address it. There's a lot of healing that we need as a country. Our apartheid past was most damaging to the mind and believing in self for the majority. To quote Stephen Bantubonkebigo, I quote, the most pot potent weapon of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed, close quote. Storytelling of people rising from poverty and making something of their lives is one way of building back this dignity, showing Africans giving to causes and just reminding the African child of their power and their dignity is very important. Going back to Nelson McGannmo's story that is on the website, he talks about art th uh, therapy that he used to help Ebola survivors to tell their stories and in the process heal. We need to heal our minds to build back our power and our dignity. One other thought that resonates with me is that shared by one of the fathers of Africa, President Julius Nyerere, who said, I quote, a man is developing himself when he grows or earns enough to provide decent conditions for himself and his family. He's not being developed if someone gives him these things, close quote. In order for our giving to be sustainable and enable Africa to thrive, it has to develop the African to self-sustenance, if nothing else. Our giving needs to ensure that Africa rises. The last thing that I believe is important is the why. Why do you give? Understanding the why has helped me when I got frustrated in the process of giving and almost gave up on the project. What has sustained me is understanding the desired outcome and the difference it would make. That would make me start again and try another way of making sure that the desired outcome is indeed achieved. In a country that is the most unequal in the world and a continent with so many needs, giving is not an option. So understanding the why is important. Do you give for the show? Do you give to cleanse guilt? Or do you give because you want to make a positive difference? None of it is wrong, but understanding why is key. Where giving is for a show, my prayer is that those that receive have intentions that are bigger than themselves and their acts lead to sustainable development, which is where the vetting of the projects and the recipients by the Kisima has put in place uh, for the fund is very important. And I really applaud you for doing that. The three prong approach of the Kisima initiative as alluded to by uh, the, the Professor Moyo uh, is very important sharing good stories of giving. And I like that people tell their stories themselves, their way, they are not curated. That's how we did it. That's how we grew up. And that's how our forebears used to tell them. So you're bringing back what we know, what we can relate to, what is part of our culture, but you're putting it on a platform so that it withstands the test of time so that it can be shared and passed on through generations. And people that may not know you, not in the same room as you will still have access to your stories and feel better about themselves and learn from you just by checking the platform and looking at the stories. It is my prayer that through stories, we build back African dignity, we heal the mind and remind Africans 
of who they are and what they are capable of individually and collectively. Congratulations, Ongera, Alala. May Africa prosper from this initiative. I thank you.